You might be thinking about moving to Milburn, New Jersey, or you might be thinking about moving to Short Hills, New Jersey. In this video, we're gonna break down what's the difference, why is one in the other, it's very confusing, right? If you're new to thinking about moving to the New Jersey suburbs of New York City, you're probably asking yourself these questions and you're probably a little bit confused about the two areas. Well, we're gonna break it down for you in today's video. And we're also gonna cover all the important things you need to know. We're gonna do this via a map tour and we're gonna talk about schools, restaurants, shops, you know, everything you need to know, arts and leisure, recreation, what is there to do in Milburn and Short Hills? And is it the right place for you? That way you can get an idea if it's the right place for you and if you wanna continue looking in this area. My name is Jeff Massey. I'm your local realtor in the Summit, Short Hills, and Chatham area. And in general, the Midtown Direct communities, the suburbs of New York City in New Jersey. I'm here to help you be a resource for you on the ground if you're thinking about moving from Manhattan or Brooklyn, anywhere in the area, or if you're moving from far away and relocating for work to this area. And my team and I would love to help you find a home that can work perfectly for you. That's what we're here for. But in this video, we're here to add value and hopefully get you more information so you can understand the area. All right, so let's jump into the map so you can get a little bit more familiar. So if we type in Milburn, New Jersey, you can see this red dotted line. This is Milburn. If we zoom out really far, you can see New York City on the, left, on the right. And this is to the east. Uh, we are in Essex County, New Jersey here in Milburn. Um, and you're about a 20 minute ride on Route 78. If I take out my pen here, this here is the Holland Tunnel. So if you take Route 78 all the way out, you're going to hit Milburn and you can get off the highway over here or you can go down and go out 24 and get off in Short Hills. And we'll talk about that a little bit in a second. So that's the area in terms of geographic. If I zoom out a little bit, we can clear this out. If I zoom out a little bit more, you can see where Milburn is. So let's zoom in a little bit more. And now a lot of people are asking, well, what's the difference between Short Hills and Milburn, right? So let's type in Short Hills just so you can see. So now we're highlighting this red section here, this dotted line. Now Short Hills technically is not an incorporated city. You can see here on the side, it's an unincorporated community and census designated place. It's called a C. DP census designated place. So what that means is the census of the United States actually does track the population of this location. And this particular location, Short Hills, like I said, is unincorporated. What that means is it's basically within the boundaries of Milburn. So the mun municipality, the governing body is Milburn, but Short Hills is, um, where, you know, okay, I live in Short Hills proper. Technically I'm within these boundaries. Um, that's my address, but my municipality and my taxes are going to Essex County and Milburn Township. But what that means is that sh that census designation means that they're tra tracking the population in this area. So right now it's around 14,000 people. Now, if we zoom out, we go back to Milburn and that whole area there, that's about 20,000 people. The 20,000 is inclusive of the 14,000. So when you kind of subtract out the area, it's actually most of the acreage is in Short Hills. And then this area, let me grab my pen again. So most of the acreage is up here in Short Hills. So most of the population is up there in Short Hills. And then if you look at Milburn down here, you've got that other 7,000 people um, roughly. So that gives you an idea of what's going on in terms of the difference between Short Hills and Milburn. Now to zoom out a little bit, just to talk about neighboring towns, you've got Summit over here to the west, you've got Maplewood to the east, you've got Springfield to the south over here, and then you've got Livingston to the north. So that gives you an, an idea. You've also got a little bit of Chatham to the west, sort of to the northwest corner here. And that gives you an idea of the geography. And this is Route 24, like I was saying, that kind of bifurcates Summit and Short Hills, but it also gives you access to Route 78 if you're trying to go into the city. Now, the other thing that's interesting about Short Hills, it has its own post office, which is right down here. We're going to start to talk about the map a little bit and where things are. So this little area here gives you the Short Hills train station. 
and the post office is right next to it. If I drop the street view here, you can see the little downtown area. Now it's not really a downtown. It's, it's like one shopping center. You've got a gas station on the corner, uh, cleaners, pharmacy, you've got Indian uh, pizza. And like I said, down here is the post office area. So this is your post office and your train station is right on the other side. Now trains from the Short Hill stop to the city. If I click here, you'll see the blue line pop up. Now that's the Mill Morrison Essex line, which is going to take you on this route through to the city. And that gets in, into Penn Station. Now that gets you into Penn Station around 37 to 40 minutes if you get that those super uh, convenient fast trains. Now, conversely, Milburn has its own station over here, and that's right off of its downtown, which we'll talk about in a second. That station is going to get you a little bit faster into the city, so maybe like between 39 and like 35 minutes if you're getting those fast trains, and there's parking nearby. So those are your two train stations within the Milburn Short Hills area, so you do have options depending on where you live. So let's talk about sort of the hot spots, where things are, where things are to do, um, that kind of thing. So like I said, you do have the Short Hills downtown. Let's click out of that um, map there. So you do have the Short Hills downtown where you see this Brooklyn pizza. And then you have the bigger downtown area. It really, like I said, the Short Hills downtown is really just like a one strip of shopping. But the bigger area here is the Milburn downtown. And you've got Milburn Avenue running across sort of east to west with this little bump, kind of a hump of a east to west. And then you've got Essex Street, which runs parallel. Now, Milburn Avenue is a one-way street going east, and then Essex Street is a one-way street going west. And then the cross street is a main street right here. And this is, if you haven't seen my other videos where we go downtown, we do a, a in-person tour, you'll see main streets where they close off and have like the nice summer outdoor dining. We'll talk about that when we get to the restaurants. But just to give you an idea, those are your two kind of parallel streets arching across. And then you have Taylor Park here to the south, which has tennis courts, basketball, kids playground, a nice outdoor area, some baseball. And that sort of connects up through the Rose Garden onto Milburn Avenue. Now, if you go down a little bit further, you've also got more shopping on Milburn Avenue where it becomes a two-way road. And you've got Trader Joe's, you've got some, um, you know, doctor's office and stuff down here. If you keep going down there, that that takes you down uh, to the end of, of the Milburn area. So going back to the downtown, let's talk about this is really where you're going to find all your shops and restaurants. So little boutiques, stuff like that. But I mean, everyone's mostly down there for food, right? I mean, you might go down there to, to do some specific shopping. You've got like some antique stuffs over here, Mariana's uh, treasures, but you know, shoe shopping. Um, there are some home goods. I think this is a lighting store in the corner. You've got different things where you could go shopping, but most people are coming down there to do their, you know, their lunch and their dinners and that kind of thing. So one of the best, most popular lunch spots, I've talked about it before on the channel, is the Milburn Deli. They've got really great uh, sandwiches, uh, salads. You can get everything from, you know, chicken parm to, uh, you know, BLT, that kind of thing. On the other side of the street, you've got your more traditional uh, delicatessen, which is the Goldberg's uh, Deli, which is right across the street. Yeah, Goldberg's is more of your, like, classic New York deli, whereas uh, Milburn Deli is more, a little bit more modern and kind of got, you know, different options. So those are your two delis, but you've got so many other things. You've got pliables, you've got a ramen place down the street. Um, Thai food back here. Now this is the Rahway River, which cuts through um, Taylor Park and Short Hills and Milburn. The Rahway actually flooded a few years ago. You probably saw it in the news. So a lot of these businesses were flooded out when this when this river went over. Um, and like I said, back here you've got some pedestrian areas. You can check out the Thai house. You've also got Live Breads, um, Caramia Italian, uh, Fiamma Pizza. Um, lots of pizza in the area. You've got EVOO and lemon, so that's like a Mediterranean style. And the other cool one is Milburn Standard. So those two, Milburn Center and EVOO, they spill out onto the main street in the summer, as well as Fiamma Pizza. You've also got La Strada Pizza down here on 
on Milburn. Lots of great pizza in the area. Now, up on Essex, you've got a couple other cool places. You've got the Mariachi Mexican. That's really fun if you're looking for like a, you know, cool, fun environment, good drinks, that kind of stuff. Um, they've got some outdoor seating there as well. Saigon Cafe. And um, if you go a little bit further down on Milburn, you've got some other pizza down here. Clemenza's Pizza down here as well. So lots of pizza options. The other thing you might like if you're interested in like a diner style, you've got Milburn Deli up here on the corner of Lackawanna Place in Essex. So one other place I wanted to just point out that I really like, it's the Mochi Nut. Okay, here it is. Mochi Mali is a donut shop that uses sort of like half regular flour and then half mochi flour. So it, it makes for a really interesting texture. You're going to want to check that out if you're down here. Uh, it's one of my favorites. There's also an, another one in Summit. It's a different owner called Mochi Nut. Um, but they're very similar. And I think they usually have like uh, teas and stuff. If we go to their website here. Uh, yeah, donuts. What else? Yeah, mochi nuts. Really, really good food there. So check that out if you're in the area or you want something sweet, something different. Uh, the other one in terms of sweets, there's uh, Casa de Nata. So those are those uh, Portuguese, um, Pastel de Belém. If you've ever been to Portugal in, um, in Lisbon, the, the famous Pastel de Belém, where they it's like a thousand layers of, of crispy uh, dough and it cooks up. They have an egg custard in the middle. So they, the pastel de nata is like the, you know, if you're, if you're officially in Lisbon and from Belém, they call it that, but pastel de nata is like the main, the, you know, the, the copy of that. I just ranted on that for way too long. So apologies, but you can, if you're looking for something, uh, sort of sweet, go check out Casa de Nantas and that's right on Milburn and Maine. So lots of good places to eat down here i could probably name like a hundred more so that area of the map is your main downtown which you're going to really find everything you need like restaurants and shops uh one little thing if we're kind of segueing into like arts and leisure let's get into if we go up the street a little bit on um main street becomes old short hills road we cut up here you've got the middle school which we'll talk about later but you've also got the paper mill playhouse and another nice little restaurant, the Carriage House, which is right across the street. So the paper mill has lots of fun events. Uh, here we can see the inside of the space. And um, yeah, very nice theater. So they, they put on productions there. And, you know, really great venue in, in terms of different things. Let's see if we can see what is coming up soon. If we go on their website, let's see. So they've got cabaret and dining going on. Um, theater classes, lots of fun stuff there to do for the family or with the family or with friends and family. Um, and then behind that, let's um, actually, before we get to that kind of like strict recreation in terms of arts and leisure and, and kind of trending over into, into leisure a little bit more, we've got, um, where did it go? The Cora Hartshorn Arboretum, which is right over here. Uh, just behind the train station. So you've got a bird sanctuary there and also, you know, a preserve of land that you can go in the trails and explore. And then there's another one up here, Greenwood Gardens, which has also nice man. This one's more of like a manicured setup where they have different types of gardens throughout. So you can go check that out. We switch to uh, land. If we switch to satellite mode, you can see sort of their grounds here where they have these pretty gardens and that kind of a thing. I think they have day passes and then you can also become a member um, and go, you know, throughout. You can also see if I zoom out here, which is kind of trending more into the recreation topic. If we go back to our regular, you've got South Mountain Reservation. And so South Mountain Reservation in terms of geography, kind of, um, if we get the pen, it kind of, is the the nexus between short hills on this side and then milburn coming up on this side on the south and then as we cut uh wyoming avenue goes along here but as we cut somewhere over here we start to become maplewood so that's the kind of geographic shift in terms of uh, south mountain reservation so you do have lots of hiking trails in there so most of it geographically starts to connect up with maplewood 
And as we go super further up, we get into uh, West Orange and Livingston up here. And just one uh, nice thing that this is Exit County, it's not in Short Hills anymore, but you have uh, the Orange Reserve here, which is really pretty, really nice place to go walking. It's right next to Short Hills, so it's a good thing to, to talk about. You've got the Regatta Playground, which is really pretty, nice place for you know, kids to run around and they've got this big pirate ship here. I'll show some B-roll as well. So lots of fun things for the kids to do there. And then the Turtleback Zoo is just on the other side. And this is Essex County Parks Department. They have a really great um, zoo here. It's honestly, I've talked about it before. It has mostly almost every animal you can imagine, with the exception of I think polar bear, I'm pretty sure they have the elephants and giraffes down here. If we zoom in, they don't give you the actual numbers here. But um, it comparing it to like the Bronx Zoo, it's it's pretty, you know, it's not as big, but it's pretty elaborate in terms of the amount of animals. You also have the uh, ice rink up here that's part of Essex County. And then the other thing that's nice, you have the mini golf and then this McLoon's Boathouse. Actually, my wife, my my family just went over there the other day. Uh, really nice dining. Here's the bar area, the view from patio. Really nice dining experience uh, right on Orange Reservoir there. So gives you some other things to do just outside of Milburn and Short Hills. And the other thing you have in terms of recreation that's public is if we zoom in over here, this is the Milburn Municipal uh, section so you have a little mini golf, not mini golf, you have a like a par, th oops. So you have a par three course here. You have the Melbourne pool area. You have some tennis, some baseball stuff. So this is right at the northern point of Short Hills and, and Melbourne overall. And then actually across the street, you have East Orange Golf Course. So those are your public courses. Oops, I'm in some weird sort of, Geography. Actually, this is an interesting map because it shows you sort of the hilly nature, the short hills. Um, and that's a name that um, Hartshorn, who founded the area, he liked that name because actually the, the Lenape tribe that lived here a long time ago, um, that was one of the nicknames that they had given the area. Um, so he wanted to stick with that. Other people kind of wanted him to name it after himself, but he said, no, it's it's more interesting this way. So you can kind of see some of the the... The topography here, um, South Mountain Reservation with this big peak down here in the corner, and then these hills as, you know, they roll through Short Hills area. Milburn's sort of down at the bottom where the downtown is and where Taylor Park is down here. So the other thing in terms of golf and recreation, you've got Canubra Country Club right here. And I guess we'll switch back to, to satellite mode. You've got 36 holes here. 18 on this, I believe, and then 18 in the summit side, cut 24 cutting right through. And that's a really nice place if you're looking to get out. I believe they have swimming pools there and everything. Now, that is a private course. You'd have to join and or, you know, find some friends to, that are members and get in there. But that's a really beautiful amenity to have right in town. Now, the other place, now that we're here, this is the Short Hills Mall. And if we switch back... Short Hills Mall is kind of pretty famous, actually. You've probably heard of it if you're in the city. Um, this place has all sorts of high-end stores. You can see right here, Fendi, Tiffany, Neiman Marcus, Nordstrom. Uh, this side has Bloomingdale's. Um, I think they even have the lower level kind of has, the you know, like the Banana Republic, Ann Taylor, Gap, these kind of places. There's a really nice pizza place over here, uh, Marcata. Prime Mercado, they have, it's kind of like um, Italian sort of um, like a food court where you can get all different things. Uh, let's see, they have, you know, pizza, pasta, these kind of things. And that's in the mall. They don't really have a, a true food, food court in Short Hills Mall. You have like individual restaurants. So you have the um, Cheesecake Factory over here. Um, but let, let me go upstairs if it will let me. Sometimes there's like a little button so you can, anyways, you have, um, what I was going to say is you have other stores upstairs that are a little fancier. You have like, um, Louis Vuitton, 
and uh, Gucci, these kind of places. So this is the Short Hills Mall, really your one-stop shop for everything high-end to just kind of middle middle market shopping. And you've got, like I said, a few different restaurants. There's a restaurant in the Neiman Marcus. You also have legal seafood right here. I don't know why it's showing up. And then there's a Ruth's Chris Steakhouse over here as well. So some high-end options. For some reason, legal seafood showing up here, but it, it's actually located down here. Oh, Ruth's Chris as well. And there's the Ruth's Chris showing up now as well. All right, so let's zoom out and give you a little bit more of an overview in terms of, so we talked about sort of recreation. You've got South Mountain Reservation. You can do hiking, Greenwood Gardens, the Arboretum. Okay, so let's talk about schools. Milburn schools. If it pulls up this any of the actual schools. No, it's not. So it's just showing you the school district here, which is overlapping with the, the township. Now I can click over to niche.com. Now I recommend niche.com to get all your data. This is not my opinion. This is their data based on their fact finding and collecting. And any of the opinions here you see are their opinions, not my opinions. So you can see here the township school district. So this would be the public schools, not any of the private schools. Uh, it's actually ranked on niche.com as the number one school district in the state of New Jersey. Um, it's basically A pluses all around in terms of um, academics, uh, A minus for clubs and activities. It does have a B for diversity, uh, A plus for college prep, and A for admission, uh, administration, excuse me, not admission. So in terms of the actual school district you've got the high school which is let's see if we can click into this so you've got the high school which is right down here right behind taylor park and the um milburn avenue so this is your main high school the high school itself is ranked very very high if we click into that actually let's go back and let me open up a new window for that specifically we go to the high school so it's ranked the number one high school in Essex County, but if we go down a little bit uh, in terms of overall rankings, um, rep, let's see, you see all rankings here. So very, very high rankings. Out of 20,000 high schools in the United States, it's ranked 131. So again, these are not my, my recommendations or anything. This is just based on their data. So you have to click onto niche.com and see what they use to actually um, underwrite that information and where they come up with those those claims. But what I wanted to do is just show you again where the different schools are. So you've got the middle school right down here, which is right up Short Hill, Old Short Hills Road off of Main Street. And um, this is your middle school. And then the other schools you have are the little um, elementary schools. So you've got South Mountain School down here the Washington School over here. This is actually fifth grade, the Washington School. South Mountain is pre-K through four. And then up here, up oh, one more school, Wyoming School is up in the Wyoming section before you get into Maplewood. That's K through four. Um, Greenwood, Glenwood, sorry, is K through four. Hartshorn is K through four. And then up here, you've got the Deerfield Elementary School K through four. So all of those kind of funnel into the fifth grade school at Washington, and then the middle school, which is six to eight, and then the high school, which is nine to 12. And like I said, as you can see here from niche.com, very good uh, ratings. You've got your, your proficiency of reading and math. Um, average SAT score is 1400, which seems very high. That's based on 445 responses. So it's a pretty good statistical number. I'm guessing the people that are putting them on there are probably, you know, pretty proud of their scores. So I don't know, maybe, maybe that doesn't include everyone because this is people volunteering that information. So if you're getting a lower score, you maybe you don't volunteer that information. I don't know. You have to kind of dig through their numbers and see what's kind of, you know, underwriting that information. Um, te student teacher ratio 13 to one. And this is expenses per student, 23,000 per year per student. 
So that gives you an idea of the school district. Now let's talk about some real estate. Okay, so talking about real estate in Milburn and Short Hills. Now the MLS doesn't let me draw out Short Hills specifically. So this is overall data in terms of Milburn. And we've got the averages here from the past 12 months. I'm recording this in August of 2023. So this is gonna give us 12 months of data from August backwards. So in terms of active listings, the average is 1.878, so just under 1.9. And then when you look at median, so it's looking at a little bit more of your, instead of just average, you're looking at like what's the most likely out of, out of all of those listings, it's about 1.6 million. Uh, and then as you can see, the bulk of the inventory is around 157 is in the five bedroom plus. So it's trends down from there, four bedroom, three bedroom, two bedroom, not as many as you can see. In terms of under contract, your average is right now in terms of under contract 1.7 and then the median is 1.544. So pretty similar to the active versus under contract. Then if we looked at sold listings, average right now in the last 12 months, we've had 251 sales close, the bulk of those being five bedroom plus, 1.78, so just under 1.8 million, and the median 1.6. So those are trending similarly to the actives, but when you look at this, days on market average is 23. That's pretty interesting. And, um, the overall list price to sold price ratio, 105%. Actually, if you look back at original list price to sold price, 104%. So interesting there that most homes are going over asking uh, on average 5%. So those are your key metrics, uh, days on market 23 and sell price to list price 105%. Those are key indicators for how fast the market's moving and how much demand there is. So there, while there's extremely limited supply, you do have a lot of demand. Buyers are not worried about these interest rates because they know they can refinance down the road. What they do know is because people are sitting on the sidelines because of interest rates, they know that there's slightly less competition, even though you're still seeing competition because 105%, you know, you're still having to overbid a little bit to get it. So there's still interest. And what I keep telling people is once interest rates come down longer term, you're going to see more listings come on the market because some of those sellers have been wanting to move for a while. They were stuck at a lower interest rate. They didn't want to, you know, get rid of that interest rate. So they're afraid to move and then pay a higher interest rate. So they're finally going to come back and list. That's going to bring on a little bit of supply, but it's not going to be enough to, uh, respond to the pent up demand that we're seeing in the last sort of 12 months. And depending on how many more months this keeps going, that's going to keep building up demand. And there's going to be a flood of new buyers once those rates come down to where the buyers perceive them as more uh, tenable, let's say. Like I said, I don't think that's the case. I think if you're really looking, you should be buying now while there's less competition and looking and seeing what you can get that really works for your budget. So going forward, once inventory loosens up a little bit and interest rates come down, you're going to see that flood of buyers come in. And I think this 105% could keep creeping up because you're going to have that many more uh, bidding wars and that kind of thing. So that gives you an idea in terms of real estate. I hope this overview of the town has given you a little bit more of a taste of a flavor of Milburn and Short Hills. Uh, there's definitely a difference in pricing when you look in Short Hill specifically. You're going to notice that if we start to look at listings together, the, the school district is all the same. So even if you're in Melbourne getting a slightly better deal, um, the homes, like I said, there are a little bit less expensive or a little bit more affordable. But Short Hills is where the bulk of those super high-end homes are going to be that are going to be a little bit more expensive so i hope you found that helpful if you have any questions let me down down in the comments or feel free to reach out to us directly that's what we're here for we really love interacting with clients and learning more about their particular needs what they're looking to do on their real estate search that's what we're here for and of course guide you through the process from a to z we want to get you to the closing table as smoothly as possible with the least amount of headaches once again my name is jeff massey i'm your local realtor here in the area and i'd love to help you Thank you for letting me into your home tonight, and I hope that together we can help find your next one. In the meantime, we'll see you in the next video.